Hello. I'm Donald Chilton. I'm the uh, product development manager here and what we're going to talk about today is going to be our industrial filtration line. Now in front of me we've got just a small gathering of our 9,000 plus part numbers that we have available. You see a little bit of everything from spin-ons to cartridge filters to some things you may not recognize. What we want to do is talk about each and every one of these in some detail, but what you need to understand about industrial filtration is it's very similar to what you sell today. It's just a little bit different. It looks a little different. It is just a smidge different. So what you need to understand, industrial filtration gets a lot of the names for the products and the shapes and sizes from where they're used in the system. Let's take a look at each of the products. The very first product we're going to look at is something you're probably very familiar with, the trusty old spin-on. We've had spin-ons around for a long, long time. They are very uh, easy to make uh, for those that understand them, and they're also very easy to use for the uh, installer. So he can easily install this in the system. It could be used in lots of different places, whether it's on the low pressure side or the return side, wherever it might be. But it's a very vulnerable design that's been around a long time, so that's why you still see them in use. The next item is the suction strainer. Suction strainers are very easy to identify, typically going to have a very large uh, nut on one end, and it's going to always have very open media. That media is basically the insurance policy to make sure nothing big uh, gets into the pump. Pumps are very expensive, we don't want to tear up pumps. Some systems will have a suction strainer literally immersed in the fluid or it would have a suction filter, which is very similar to the suction strainer as far as what it does. Same basic characteristics, open media, stops the big stuff, the insurance policy for your pump. Once we've pressurized the fluid, we get to the pressure filter. Pressure filters are always gonna be your most expensive filters in the system. The reason is they have to send up to the full system pressure. Some systems, like the backhoe that you may have is only going to be a few hundred PSI. That could be a spin-on. If it's a steel mill and they're running a lot of, of processed steel through, they may have several thousand PSI to deal with that. When those situations occur, you're going to find CNC'd end caps, heavy center tubes, very special and tight media, microglass media down to three microns or less. But this is where the uh, most expensive part you're going to find in the system will be. Now, once the, the system's pressurized the fluid and it's done its work, we've extended the cylinder, we've pushed the press and, and stamped out steel at the automotive plant, whatever the case might be, we're now returning the fluid back to the tank. So when we return fluid back to the tank, we have a return filter. So return filters can be very large to very small. And what you will all sometimes see with these is plastic end caps. They don't have to stand up to the system pressure so they take little tricks and make different things. But the media is still the same type scenario. If you have leaky seals, there's a problem with one of the servos, you want to be able to capture any small filtration or small contaminant with this filtration so you, again, can get down into the three micron range. Now, we also have specialty filters, such as some of these little items here, which are used in different parts of the system. And once that fluid's actually gone back to the tank, you will see something on top typically that looks like the, uh, the breather cap on your 1970 Buick, or you may see something like this, a desiccant filter. They both basically do the same thing. They keep trash from getting into the tank. The tank has to breathe. As the fluid is pumped, it lowers obviously the tank fluid level, and as it returns, it rises again. So it's just like a lung, so it has to breathe. So what we have is we have these desiccant type filters and the neat thing about our desiccant filters is they start off gold as you see this one and they become green as they absorb water. The nice thing also about these filters is they've got very fine two micron filtration in the top and the bottom as it breathes. So that's a little bit of what we offer in hydraulic filters but industrial filtration is more than just hydraulic filters. Industrial filtration also encompasses compressor filters. Compressor filters are very easy to understand, but we also have to understand where they're used. We have two different styles that we want to talk about today. That is the air oil separator. Both of these are air oil separators. 
what we have in front of us is basically the European style, which you may mistake for spin on, which it is. It's basically a modified spin on that has coalescing media and it's got a drain built in. So the European style, whether it's Kaiser, Atlas Copco compressors, some of the ones you've seen, they're typically going to use this type of setup for their oil separation. So again, same thought as the spin-ons we talked about earlier, easy to install, easy to find, it's not hard to do. The US style is what they call either the top hat, depends on how you look at it, or the basket. So you can have it either way or either lingo means the same exact thing. This one is contained within a reservoir. The European style is external, so it's a spin on, it's quicker to change, but it's a not quite as uh, robust, if you will, as far as the amount and life that you can get out of the US style. So that's the two different styles of aerial separators. So we've taken a few minutes today to talk about the industrial filtration line. I hope that we've taken a little bit of the mystery out of it for you. We've explained a lot of the different products, what they do. You know, this is just a small gathering of all the part numbers that we have. We hopefully have made it a little easier for you to understand what they are, what they do, and how they can make your business grow and be successful. Thank you.